I'm Scott Al Miller. This is my vlog of daily life living in Leon, Nicaragua. I get asked on a pretty regular basis, how would I get from Managua, where the airport is or the main bus drop-offs are, uh, if I'm going to come out to Leon, or even more specifically, the Ponaloya and Las Penitas beach areas. This isn't a, a really popular tourist path. It's not terrible, but it is not the prime one, and so there aren't the obvious options for just zipping out here on your vacation, or if you're living in the area, you may not be familiar with how to get out. So I've been asked this a bit. I'm going to make a video today explaining exactly what your reasonable options are for coming out here and visiting us both on the beach and in the colonial city. We're going to get to all that right after the bump. For those unfamiliar with the city of Leon and its beach communities of Ponaloya and Las Penitas, I'll just give you the really quick highlights. Leon is Nicaragua's second city. It is about 300,000 people, so it's the second largest city. It is also the main university center and famous for being an exporter of both education and revolution. So a lot of really interesting history has happened here, and it is one of the two original colonial cities of the country of Nicaragua, along with its sister, Granada. Both were founded in the same year, which is five hundred years ago this year. So this is a perfect year for, ta for talking about how to get out here. So 1524 is the founding of both Granada and Leon. Technically, Granada was founded first, but it's just a technicality. It was all just racing paperwork to be signed. So at 500 years old, you can imagine we have some really interesting history and a lot of colonial buildings, and it's just a great place to come visit if you want to see what traditional Nicaragua has looked like uh, through the centuries. We have uh, the most important museum uh, in all of Central America, which is a very large art museum. Right here in the city, we have the Ruben Dario Museum. We have the Mu Museum of the Revolution. We have the famous cathedral. We, the Granada also has a famous cathedral, but we have the big one. They have the more uh, uh, iconic one from the Nicaraguan images. Uh, we have uh, a really cool uh, center of the city to travel around. We have the giant indigenous city of Sutiava, which is where I live right here. And unlike anywhere else, in Nicaragua, we have two beaches, any beaches, that are actually part of the city zone on the oceanfront. Granada does have a beach, but it is a lakefront beach. It is a completely different thing. Here we have Pacific Oceanfront within the city zone. It's not right in the city, but it is within the city metropolitan area, within the Alcadia, as we would say. And so you actually are able to take taxis and public buses down to there. So let's talk about how you would come out and visit this area now that we've sold you on some of the things to do. And that's just the city itself. This is also the area that you use for most of the volcano viewing. Not this, there's specific cool volcano stuff throughout the country, but we're the area with all the volcanoes where you can get up and see just tons of them. We have the dark history tour. We have the volcano boarding. That's all done out here in Leon. So it's very popular to come out here. We're on the backpacker trail and we have one of the competitors, uh, the competitor actually, to Sunday Fun Day, the famous Sunday event in San Juan del Sur. We have the Tuesday, uh, they call it the pub crawl or the Tuesday booze day here in Las Penitas is absolutely enormous as well and is every week. It is very much similar. It's, it is a little bit smaller and it's a lot less of a crawl. It's fewer locations, but it is a lot of people. It is super popular. So if you're in the backpacker or just looking for that party, that is managed. And, and because of the city, we do it in the city of Leon and then the bus takes you out to the beach so both are connected. So really interesting, big, cool stuff happens out here. Lots of reasons, no matter who you are, what you're looking for as part of your Nicaraguan experience, this could be a great location to come out to. So how do you get here? For most travelers, you're going to be coming from Managua, and that is where our question normally is. If you're somewhere else in the country, generally you're going to either find some transportation that brings you directly to Leon, or you're going to go to Managua first. The only time that you really come to Leon directly is if you're driving yourself, or you've hired a car, and you're coming from the south, either from Costa Rica, from San Juan del Sur, or something like that. Then you're going to bypass Managua by taking the new new, about three years old, Nicaragua 169 bypass uh, that cuts quite a bit of time off and comes out towards Leon. That's very easy, and any driver or shuttle is just going to take you that way. If you're coming in from Honduras, then quite likely you're going to come around the volcanoes and stop in Leon before you head on to Managua because we're on the highway coming from western Honduras. If you're coming from El Salvador or the Honduran uh, coastal zone, so you'll come 
pretty much to Leon in almost all circumstances because the Pan American Bypass, that's the secondary road of the Pan American because we're north of Managua and south of Guatemala City. That means there's two Pan, uh, Pan American highways, the eastern or primary one that goes through Esteli and Tegucigalpa up through Honduras and the western one that comes through Leon and goes up through San Salvador. Uh, in the south, they merge in downtown Managua and in the north, they merge in Guatemala City. But here in this one little zone, was because of El Salvador and Honduras, each of those countries gets one of the alternatives and then Guatemala and Nicaragua manage combining them and separating them depending on the direction that you're going. So we're going to treat this as if you're coming from Managua because everywhere else this is pretty straightforward and you can adapt once you're in Leon how to get out to the beach because we're going to talk about how to do both to make things simple for you. So in many cases here in Nicaragua, it is super popular to just hire a rented car. This is not as expensive or as cumbersome as it seems. And if you're staying in Managua, you can just ask your hotel to arrange this for you. Uh, if you have a taxi driver that you work with, quite often you can ask them. They're often very willing to do so because it guarantees them pretty much a half day or a full day of work, depending on what you're looking to do. And so it can be very good for them and they'll be able to give you a deal because it's, it's actually more efficient for them. So it's not as expensive generally as you may think it would be. And if you're looking for prices, it's gonna vary a lot depending on exactly where you're coming from, where you're going and who you talk to. But generally on the low end, the price for that trip would be around $70 US and on the high end, about 150. Normally we pay in the 90 to 110 range, really depends on time of day and all that. But very often we're doing it for less than 100 even in the middle of the night because you often, from Leon, you wanna go out to Managua because of late night flights. So it's a common thing to do. And it's generally under $100. So if you're getting very much over a hundred, unless you need a bigger, if you need a van or something, that's going to cost a little bit more, but still very, very affordable. If you have a family of four or something, and you just want to rent a van and have a taxi driver bring you out, that is going to be a lot closer to the 150. But when you split it between all those people, it's generally pretty, uh, pretty cost effective. So that's, that's incredibly popular, especially with tourists who want to make the absolute best use of their time are not particularly interested in taking time to learn different public transportation options because you can take the right to your hotel or out to the beach, wherever it is you want to go. The whole thing will be handled by your taxi driver or your private driver uh, and not something that you have to figure out, which is a lot of fun if you live here or you're just into exploring the region. You're trying to be a backpacker on the ultimately low budget, of course. We encourage you to use public transportation, learn that stuff. That's part of the experience. So that's, that can be fun and cost effective and valuable and, and all that. And like that you really experience Nicaragua in a better way. But if you're a more traditional tourist and you're looking to do some sites and, you know, be, be a bit more relaxed, you're not here to necessarily really get steeped in the culture. Sure, you want to explore it. No question. But you're not really looking to, to have the living in Nicaragua experience it's often advisable to just hire a private driver. You could drive yourself, but I think if you do that, you just know to use Google Maps, you know what to do, you don't need me to explain that. But if you hire a driver, uh, it means you can sit back and relax, they'll know where to stop for lunch, they'll know where to take you, they'll take you directly to your destinations, they'll make it very relaxed, and the cost of private drivers is so low here in Nicaragua because of the, the low general income and the prices of fuel are not bad and the distances really aren't very far. Everything's closer than you think it is. When you put that all together, it makes hiring a private driver for those who are on vacation or looking for a little bit more luxury experience. Absolutely, absolutely an option. I know when you're saying like, but this is the capital and like Leon's way out there. Is that really reasonable to hire a driver? To give you some context of, of scale, the actual distance, normally the reason that, that it takes a while to go between the cities is because of traffic. The eastern point of Managua, way out past the airport to like Tipitapa, all the way to Western Leon. So the farthest possible points you can consider in either city, if you're driving in the middle of the night and don't have to worry about cops, only takes about an hour and 15 minutes by car. That's less time than it takes to just drive across Dallas. So uh, would you take a taxi across Dallas? Yeah, in many cases you would if that's what you needed to do. So here, because it's at lower speeds, that distance doesn't use as much fuel and the fuel is the major cost of your taxi, not the driver, believe it or not. So when you start looking at uh, these distances and saying, oh, well, it may take a long time. It may be a big thing, but mostly it's because we're driving really slow. We're not using much fuel. It's not like you would need to normally stop for fuel on that trip. Often you can do it without stopping at a bathroom. Even in heavy traffic, you're normally only looking at two and a half hours and under more normal conditions, a little bit under two hours and often in the bus under 90 minutes. So it's really, we're really not talking a huge distance here. That's why drivers often make sense. Everything in Nicaragua is, is closer than it seems. And because fuel is such a major component, that's often a way to go. Then that's just easy. So that's probably, if you're a tourist, what you want to do. 
for the rest of us who are looking for something a little bit more adventurous. Uh, there are some in-between options. There's things like the Ashimche bus, which I've talked about a bit. You don't normally take them between cities like this, uh, but you can. They're normally meant for really big distances. I take them from Leon to Antigua, Guatemala. They'll go from Leon to San Juan del Sur. That's a far enough distance that that kind of shuttle, it's cheaper than doing uh, a private car, but it's a lot more like a private car experience. Often they'll pick you up at your hotel or house. They'll drop you at your hotel where you're going to in your destination. They don't stop at a million places in between them. We'll stop in a couple, but they're they're just taking a small load of people, and it's it's a very uh, halfway between your own personal taxi and the public bus, um, and it, it can be a nice option if they're going at the right time to the right places for you. Uh, and if you're you know if you're going with a lot of people, private car is going to be easier. But if you're going alone, it could easily be a third to half the cost of a private car, which could make it make a lot of sense for you. So I'm very happy with them. I've taken them in both directions, and always recommend them uh, when you're looking for that kind of experience. So that. Certainly an option. Managua to Leon does exist. I don't know if the time of day would be good for very many people. Neither of those are destinations that they plan around. They're starting places on the way to other things, generally. So for everyone else who's looking for the bus option, there are multiple options, but there's one that really makes sense. Assuming that you have an extra one to two dollars to spare, if you're at a point where you're literally cutting every single penny, then you might want to consider walking, bicycling, bicycling, or at worst case, taking the chicken buses. I've never done the chicken bus that entire distance. Should not be hard, and I believe you can get it pretty easily in a number of places in Managua, but I can't tell you much about it. I never take a chicken bus that far on a route that has other options. I have taken it much farther to like Matagalpa, but that's farther and there's lacking other buses, so it's just the way to go. When coming between Leon and Managua, the thing that you want to take is called the UCA bus, U-C-A, and it stands for University of Central America, which doesn't exist anymore, but the bus terminal is directly across the street from the old campus. It is still an active university, it just has a new name, uh, but so the, the terminal is known as the UCA terminal, and all the buses that use it are called the UCA buses, but they're not really buses. They're actually passenger vans that normally seat 16 to 17 people. And that includes the jump seat in the front, which you want to avoid. Just don't get in that seat. Wait for the next bus if that's what they're, they're trying to put you in. It's not worth it, trust me. Uh, but beyond that, you know, it's, it's a pretty cool experience. So how do you do this? All right. So you're in Managua. You can take a taxi, you can do public buses, anything you want to get to the Uca Terminal. It's right in the middle of the city. It's in an area that's very popular. Uh, it's very close to the Carretera Messiah. So if you're staying near like the Hilton Princesa, uh, the, the main malls and stuff, all the big shopping areas, I've walked to it from many of those places. I'm not saying you should walk there, but getting there by a taxi or whatever, very, very easy. It's only going to cost you a couple of dollars. Ask your hotel or whatever, how do you get to the UCA terminal? They will get you started. There's a single UCA terminal in uh, Managua, and all the, the shuttles going all over the country originate from there or terminate there, depending on the direction you're going. And this makes everything really easy even if you're going to places that are further afield. And it is worth mentioning at this point, if you were to be coming not from Managua, but from one of the two big uh, tourist cities of Granada and Messiah, they sit on the Uca path as well, as you would probably guess being primary uh, tourist locations. So if you're already in Granada, this is as simple as, uh, you, again, ask your hotel, point you to the Uca terminal, but the Uca terminal in Granada is just half a block off the main square, the big park with the cathedral and all the, like, you know the center of the city if you're in Granada, in Granada, you can just walk to the UCA terminal. They ha There they have um, bigger shuttles. They're not the 17-person ones there. They're like 30-person. You could call them a mini bus. Very comfy, very easy, very cheap, and very fast. Just get on it in Granada, and they're going to take you to Messiah and on to the terminal in, in Managua. And that's it. Just the one stop in Messiah and on to Managua. Very easy to do. Definitely the way to go. If you're in Messiah, you're in the middle, right? So as the bus comes in from Granada, again, ask your hotel how to find the terminal. I actually don't know where the one in Messiah is. I never get on or off there, but I do pass through uh, and just get on and take it on. If you're, Of course, if you're going to Granada, go that direction. And if you're coming out to Leon, take it into Managua and Managua will be your hub. Once you're at the Managua Uca station, this is very easy. It's basically just one long line of these little shuttle buses. Once in a while, a chicken bus will come in there. So I believe the one going to Leon actually goes to the same Uca terminal. So I think you can hop that there, but I don't recommend it. It should be about 50 cents to a dollar cheaper. But we're only talking about a two and a half dollar trip already. So this, uh, while that's a big percentage, it's not saving you very much money in raw terms, but it takes a lot longer. It's a lot more stressful and just... 
I wouldn't do it. And the UCA thing is, I mean, even locals, that's what we use. We use the UCA. So, so what you do is you just look for the one going to Leon. It is direct from Managua to Leon, so you don't have to worry about, uh, you know, multiple stops. You don't have to worry about knowing an alternative name like some other locations. These are the two biggest cities. So we have a direct one directly between us. It's about in the middle of the station, and you will see it will say Leon, Managua on the shuttles, and there will be a guy standing outside screaming Leon over and over and over again. Leon, 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 Leon. Right? You just walk up and you go Leon, and he goes Leon, and they put you on the shuttle. It's very easy. Sometimes, especially if you're on a Sunday, there could be a wait. Uh, it can be a hundred people standing in line. That's probably an exaggeration, but 80 for sure. The line can wrap around the station, but most of the time when you get there, you'll be at most waiting for one of the next shuttles. And the shuttles line up after each other. So they just put 17 people on a shuttle. As soon as all 17 are on, they just take off. And the next one pulls up and 17 people load up. And as soon as they go, they take off. So they, they go pretty quickly when they're needed. And you only run into problems if one of them breaks down. And so there's a wait. And then people start backing up. Or on Sunday afternoons, I've noticed that there tends to be just so many people who get there at the same time that it can be a line. So I have waited over an hour to get on the bus before. But that's it's definitely the exception. And it's not that bad. You just stand in a line. There's a little bit of a shelter. There's a place to sit. And there's people selling pizza and a few other things. They'll walk around and sell you stuff while you're waiting. So it's fine, right? But if you're in an absolute hurry, it can cause a few problems. But in general, it's very fast. The UCA buses move very quickly, too. So once you're on the bus, so if they load up fast, they take up fast, and they're just a shuttle van. So they move really quickly down the highway. And that makes part of this, the value of this system is that they really do get you to your location really quickly. And Unlike the chicken buses, they're not doing stops all along the way. Generally, they stop. Well, anytime someone wants to get off, they just say, hey, I want to get off. They'll stop and let you off. But they're not doing pickups along the way normally. If they're empty for some reason and they see someone who's trying to get on, yeah, they'll pick them up. But I've once in all the years I've been here have I actually seen that happen. Now, dropping off constantly. Just, oh, but there's only 17 people. And most of them are getting off at some one of the major stops. So it's rare to have more than like one or two people get off a bus on in an alternative location over the entire trip. So we're not talking about very much time. You'll lose two to three minutes tops. And they just open the door, they jump out and they go, right? And they drive really fast, much faster than normal traffic because they get paid by the trip. So they, they really move, which gets you places really quickly. Typically, the UCA bus is going to stop halfway. Now, in some cases, you pay before you leave. So just be prepared that you may have to pay before you go. And in the front of the bus, it'll say how much it is. Currently, it's 78 quarter bus, but that changes with some frequency. So just look in the front. It'll say exactly what it is. They're not going to scam you. They're not going to gringo price you. Like, it's just that's the price. If you have a ton of luggage and they have to put it on the roof or they have to take up another seat, they're going to charge you double. Uh, seriously, not a big deal. It's a couple dollars, right? But I've never had that happen to me, but I know people have had it happen. But they are people with big luggage. So, you know, I just go with a backpack normally. I put it on my lap, and they never say a thing, never once. Um, so just look for that price. Make sure you pay it. But if they don't charge you when they take off, that's fine. What they're going to do is they're going to stop halfway somewhere around La Paz Centro. You can look at a map. Nagarote and La Paz Centro are the two main cities you pass through. They're not really going to stop there. Of course, you can get off as you pass through if that's what you want to do. I don't know why people would want to do that, but you could. That's where you would do it. But they do stop normally at a little place called Landers um, that's just outside La Paz Centro. They will stop, take a moment there, uh, and they'll collect your money. Um, and it just gets them away from the station. It lets them collect the money without backing up the other people boarding. So they, that's why they tend to do it in that direction. The other direction, they normally take your money in Leon because they're not as backed up. Uh, but in either case, they may take it in the middle or somewhere along the route. Uh, so they'll stop at Landers. While you're at Landers, you can buy water, you can buy snacks. And of course, before you leave the station, there's a million people selling, you know, chips and, and homemade foods and little cakes and, and cheese sticks and things all being sold in the, the bus terminal at UCA, and they will sell it to you through the window of your bus. So as long as your bus hasn't left yet, they'll try to hand you drinks and food. You can just pay it very cheap. Often it's quite tasty. It's an interesting experience. I highly recommend. It's a great way to support the people who are cooking food at home. It's like little fritangas. They come out and they'll package things. And often it's like 10 Cordobas, maybe 20 Cordobas for a little baggie. They'll make like Ziploc style bags of food. And it'll be like uh, homemade Dorito chips, enchiladitas, uh, or tajadas, the fried plantain chips, or cheese sticks, right? All kinds of cute little things. And, uh, and it's fun, right? It's a neat way to try a bunch of different flavors and, and uh, uh, little Nicaraguan products that you won't generally run into in other places. Of course, you'll find them in gas stations and stuff, but uh, to getting them fresh and off the street, like this is the way to do it. So that's a lot of fun. And Lander sells all the same things as well. So you can just ask for it out the window. Just have... I have a couple Cordoba ready, right? Have a couple 10s, a couple 20s uh, in addition to what you want and have a little bit of change so it's just easier for the bus because uh, they take odd amounts. 
uh, for the tickets, and then you're good to go. And then you can buy what you want. Uh, you'll just be like, how much? You know, Quanta Cuesta. And they'll show you Enchiladitas. Normally, it was like 10, right? Okay, here's 10 Cordoba, right? That was like a few cents, like 20 cents, whatever, maybe 25 cents, and less than 25 cents for sure. Uh, and you get a little baggie. It's a snack, right? It, a lot of fun. Do that. So they'll stop at Landers, and then they come into Leon, uh, Landers being about halfway. In Leon, there are two stops. The southern stop is the Uno gas station by Unan, the university, uh, which is also by uh, Parque Ruben Dario, which is the main municipal park of, of Leon. Uh, very famous, very beautiful. I showed on the show a lot. That stop always has taxis waiting. It also has a gas station that's always open, so you can uh, get off there, gra grab a taxi. Uh, you can go in and, and get anything you need because it's a full gas station selling like hot dogs and nachos and uh, beer and whatever you need, right? It's, it's a pretty pretty well-stocked uh, major gas station. And that's at the southeast corner of town. Basically, if you're heading any place, middle of the city or west, you want to get off there. That's actually where most of us, especially the expats, use as our terminal, not the main bus terminal, which is also known as the north stop or the final stop. If you were to stay on the bus, which is fine, you end up at the main Leon bus terminal. Now that terminal is big and it's in an area you don't want to be in. And I don't mean that like it's dangerous. I just mean that there's nothing around it that you want to do. So unless you live on the east or north of the city, which is very uncommon for expats and very, very uncommon for tourists, it doesn't make any sense to end up up there because you have to deal with this big station. You do have taxis there, but not as many as the Southern Station. Um, if you start walking, you're just in the middle of the uh, the terminal market, which is not really a market you generally want to be exploring. Like, again, it's not dangerous, but it is where you're likely to get your, your pockets picked. It is not selling stuff for tourists. You're going to be like, oh, yeah, I can buy a lot of cell phone cases and like weird little things that you probably don't want as a tourist. So it's not a place that you probably want to go, just going to waste a lot of your time. So under all normal circumstances, get off at the Uno gas station. And if you're wondering which one, it's the only one they stop at, right? If you're looking at a map on your phone, you will be on the outskirts of Leon. It is an Uno gas station. They only stop at one gas station. They only stop at one Uno. If they pull over at an Uno, that is your stop. Get off. So you get off at the Uno and then you can just grab a taxi or you can start walking. I've walked all the way across the city from there. Probably not what you want to do as a tourist, but it is pretty safe and it is something you can do if you want to explore on foot. Don't do it in the middle of the night, but if you're doing it during the day, absolutely. Um, just be aware you need head cover and stuff. There's a lot of sun. You'll be exposed quite a bit. Have a little bit of cash. You can buy. There'll be pulperias and stuff of restaurants all along the way. Stop and get snacks and drinks or whatever. And, and you could do that, right? If you're a backpacker and you're trying to get somewhere, uh, make sure you have a map and stuff. But, but absolutely, you can do it from there. And it's way easier from the Uno than it is from uh, the terminal, the final stop. Normally, though, you're going to grab a taxi from there because there's not public buses normally stopping there. Uh, I'm sure you can take the public bus from there, but I do not know the routes. So that's one we'd have to really look up. Um, and, and I'll try my best to put information in the description when I find out how you do the public bus from there to there. But almost no one's going to do that. That's one step that's much harder and generally unnecessary. The cost of a taxi is not going to be very high if you, no matter where you want to go. You want to go directly to your hotel, they'll take you from there. You want to go to the beach, they'll take you all the way to the beach. That's going to be a little bit pricey. Or they'll take you to the bus to the beach, and that should be relatively cheap, even though it is on the other side of the city. So this is the southeast point of the city. Assuming you want to go to downtown or anything like that, this is not part of the original question, which is how do you get out to the beaches. But if you do want to go to downtown, like you want to stay in Leon, then just a taxi from there will only be a few minutes. You're very close to downtown. You're just on the outskirts of the first barrio. And easily you could walk it, but it could be an hour. Right. But but that's not that bad. If you're if you're a walker like me, I walk from there to much farther all the time. No big deal. When I get dropped off, half the time I don't take a taxi because it's like, you know what? I just feel like walking. It's a nice day. I don't want to pay for a taxi, even though it's just a couple bucks. Great. And I'll use that as an opportunity to go walk through neighborhoods I don't get to see every day. So it's, it can be just fine. But if you're, you know, a tourist and you're on a schedule, you got kids, whatever, just take a taxi. There'll be plenty there. And if one isn't there, they'll be there in a minute. They do. Everyone knows to come in about when the buses are coming through. It's just a constant cycle. They're not on a tight schedule. So it's, it's very easy for them to just show up and know that there'll be someone waiting. Now, for many of you, especially those who are asking this question specifically, the place that you want to go is Ponoloy and Las Bonitas beaches. These are not in downtown. You're not going to walk to those. I mean, I've done it, but I wouldn't recommend it. Uh, so that's going to take you all day to walk there. Don't do that. But they're very easy to get to. But what do you say? When you get into your taxi or you're taking a bus and you're trying to figure out where to go, the place that you want to go is the Mercadito in Sutiava. 
That is the only thing you need to say. Everybody in the city should know how to get you exactly there. That just means the small market of Sutiava. There's only one small market in the city known as Marketito. So even if you don't say Sutiava, they should get you to the right place. And if you say Sutiava, they should get you pretty close because Sutiava is quite a large area, but the main street coming through it, there's just one main street. Ruben Dario is the main drag running west out of the city. It comes from the cathedral and the main plaza and goes straight west all the way through uh, Leon proper through Saragossa, through Labo Rio, directly through the middle of Sutiava, and continues on to the beaches of Ponaloya and Las Penitas. So anything you're doing trying to get out to the beaches, you're just gonna stay on this one main road. If you're in the plaza, you can find it very simply and just head straight out. It really is easy. So keeping your bearings on that road uh, makes everything that, you're just not gonna get lost. You don't have to worry about that. And you've got coffee shops, restaurants, shopping along that road, so it's very easy to deal with. Now, you don't probably wanna walk from downtown out to Sutiava. That's gonna be quite a long walk. It's doable, I know lots of people who do it, it's not in that crazy category, but it is a pretty long walk, especially all the way to the bus. You'll be pretty exhausted, but taking a taxi from there or a city bus, very easy, uh, relatively cheap, and will get you straight out to Marcadito. Now, all you have to do is go to Marcadito in Sutiava. So as long as you say Marcadito, say Sutiava, the market in Sutiava, like there's one market and it's right on Ruben Dario. If you were to walk it or just go straight on bicycle drive, whatever, you're going to go right to the middle of the market. It's not a giant market, hence the name Marcadito, little market, but it is on both sides of the road. It's a lot of uh, little shops around it, so tons of like fried chicken and, and asado on the street. You're going to have a lot of fruit sellers just kind of coming in on the road. It, it's a choke point. It's very difficult for cars to get through there because of the number of, of fruit stands. And then the full market is actually off to the north, to the right. But right as you come through the market, the instant you're past the market, the road is going to turn into a boulevard. So the market itself for some foolish reason, is on a tight part of the road just after the cathedral. So if you're looking, the Church of Sutiava, Iglesia de Sutiava, is uh, on, on one street, and then immediately you have a single block that has, uh, on the left, it is a convalescent home, on the right, a lot of little restaurants, and then you've got the market that's all in one block. So if you're looking for the Sutiava Church, it's going to give you a landmark of exactly how far you need to go. One more block, that's the market. Immediately as the market ends, the road turns into a boulevard. That is, it's divided and you got a little bit of trees down the middle. Instantly, just before it divides, I mean 10 feet before it divides, on the north side, that's your right as you're heading out, that is where a full chicken bus, that's an American style school bus, old yellow school bus, will pull up and wait there. That is the bus to Ponaloya. That's all it does. It goes from that point out to the beaches. So it will stop if people are along the road. It'll drop people off, but it doesn't go like around the city or anything. It goes from Marcadito out of Sutiava. It'll first go to Ponaloya, which is the northern beach. It'll go up and down, and then it'll come to the point, go back down Las Penitas, which is the southern beach pick people up, drop people off along the beach, and then it'll head back to Marcadito, sit there, load up, and do it all again. So it's doing a continuous loop all day long right from Marcadito. So that's the only thing you need to know is you need to know how to get to Leon, the Uca bus out of Managua. You need to know how to get across Leon from the eastern, southeastern point at the gas station to the Marcadito uh, bus terminal or bus station, however you want to think of it, um, which could be cab, it could be walking, it could be city bus, which I'll try to get details for you, and then just get on that Ponaloya bus coming out of Marcadito, and that will take you to anywhere on the beach that you want to go, the full length of them. Uh, most people who are watching my channel are going to want to go to Las Benitas, but you could go to either, and the beaches are not that, that long. You're only talking about a couple miles, so if you're looking for a nice long walk, you could, over the course of a couple hours, walk both beaches entirely. Remember, this is Nicaragua. There's a lot of bright sun. It's a very warm place, so be aware that you could get a lot of sun and heat exposure. Be prepared. Have a little bit of money. Make sure you're able to buy drinks. Stay hydrated. Uh, put on sunscreen. Even though we are in the tropics and very low altitude, you don't get anywhere near the UV light that you would get in the mountains that you would get in North America. Like, surprisingly, we I don't ever put on sunscreen. I don't ever burn out here. Uh, but if I go up to Mexico, if I go to Guatemala, I will burn really quickly. How However, if you're doing long walks here, protect yourself. Don't don't be getting melanoma because you're not feeling uh, the UV rays. It's a little bit lower, but a long day in the sun will still cause some damage. So be sure to do that uh, when you go out for a walk. And that is how you get from Managua all the way to the beaches. And all of that just happens in reverse. To go back, these are places that people go all the time. So there's a lot of taxis, a lot of buses, a lot of ways to do it, but there's no straight through all the way. So you got to have a couple of these things to put the pieces together. Thanks for joining me. Like and subscribe. If you'd like to help support the channel, you can and buy me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash Scott Allen Miller. That comes directly to me and helps make all of this possible. 
have to have cameras and, and editing equipment and all that. And it takes a lot of time. So I really appreciate everyone who makes the effort to, uh, to empower this program. It really means a lot to all of us. And as always, if you could take a moment to like and subscribe, tell a friend about the show, put this link on social media somewhere like Facebook, and that'll get the word out, helps us promote the channel. I'd really appreciate it. I will see all of you waiting for the rain here at the very, very end of the dry season tomorrow. And I'll do my best to pop up four additional episodes on the screen right here. And that is a great way to support the channel is just clicking on one of those. Watching it is best, but letting it play in the background, whatever, that, that is what tells the algorithm how much you love the show.